Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Michaela, and in today's video, I will be discussing the eight best books that I read in August. In August, I read a total of 16 books, and I did previously discuss the eight most disappointing books that I read. So if you did not get a chance to check out part one of my August wrap up, I will go ahead and leave that video linked in the description. But I am so happy because I did read a lot of really amazing books in August. Let's go ahead though and start with my favorite book that I read in August. That book is How Can I Help You by Laura Sims. This is a new release. It came out in July and I was so hyped and anticipating this book and I am so happy that I loved this book because if you watched my first part of my August wrap up, I had another very highly anticipated new release for me that ended up being one of my least favorite books I read last month. So I am so happy that one of the books I was predicting to love, I did actually end up absolutely loving. Now I know that thrillers on my channel get a lot of slack. I tend to rate them and review them quite harshly and critically, but this is a thriller that I genuinely adored that I am glad I read and that I would recommend to you guys wholeheartedly. What absolutely grabbed me about this book from the synopsis is the fact that we are following two librarians. I love that trope of following books about books, books about authors. So that really pulled me in. This book does take place primarily at a library and we are following our two main characters, one of which we learned is quite an unhinged woman. And the other one is a recent college graduate and it's her goal to become a published writer. When a patron is actually found dead in the library by one of those two women, the other one then becomes very suspicious of her and cannot resist digging deeper. For me, the greatest strength of this novel is what I can foresee being the biggest gripe that other people are going to have with it. I found this novel to be short and sweet, the perfect length. It was sharp, punchy, bold, and different. This novel is only 256 pages. While I loved how short and punchy this book was, I can see a lot of people finding that there's not enough depth in the characters or that it maybe ends too abruptly and I do think that those are all very fair criticisms. However for me I did rate this book five stars because I had such an enjoyable reading experience with it. I personally found the characters to be very complex and I found the conflict to be fascinating. This book hooked me from page one and I could not stop reading it. There's a quote in the beginning of this book spoken by one of the main characters, Margot, and she thinks to herself, men can never keep their violence to themselves. And while it's been over a month since I read this book, I still remember that line and have not been able to stop thinking about it. Something about this book really hit me and I just found it so bold and compelling. Another thing that really spoke to me personally with this book is there is a lot of Shirley Jackson shout outs in this book. And we're gonna speak about Shirley Jackson in a minute here, but you guys, I have to say, Shirley Jackson is a new all time favorite author of mine. There is a great tie-in with Shirley Jackson's We Have Always Lived in the Castle within this book that I loved. As a huge fan of the author and that book, seeing that reference in there really spoke to me and was just fun for me to be able to read. Overall, I personally do not have any criticisms of this book and you guys know I am a very critical reader, okay? I'm not afraid to call out things in books. Even books I love, I will still call out the flaws of that book. But I genuinely have no criticisms of this one. I found it to be a really, really good time. The next best book that I read in August is one of my rereads, okay? And that book is The Haunting of Hill House by Shirley Jackson. Now, I initially read this book back in June and I personally almost never reread books. So the fact that I read the same book twice within just about a month's time is almost unheard of for me. That 
truly tells me how much I love this book and how much it has become a new all-time favorite for me. Since finishing it in June, I had the deep desire to reread it and re-experience and relive the text. I can't quite put my finger on it, but something about this world in Shirley Jackson's writing is so charming to me that I just want to keep immersing myself back into it. I had this be my like bedtime book like it was a type of audiobook that I would put on every night before falling asleep and I can't quite explain it again but something about this world, the characters, the prose, something about the way Shirley Jackson crafted this book, it surrounds me with like this cloud-like pillowy feeling and almost puts me into like a dreamlike state when I'm reading it. I don't know when I read this I become so immersed in it and that is not often the case okay. Even my most favorite books sometimes it's hard for me to fully feel invested in it but I really really connect to this one. I really adore the main character of this book Eleanor. There's something about her that is so familiar when I read this book. I love how she lives in the clouds. I love everything about it, okay? This book to me is so witchy. It's so gorgeous. It's completely entrancing. The next five-star book that I read in August is Delicate Condition by Danielle Valentine. I really, really, really enjoyed this book. I did not expect to love it as much as I did. Delicate Condition is pitched as the push meets the silent patient. And I've also seen this one compared to Rosemary's Baby. We're pretty much following our main protagonist who wants to become pregnant and she begins an IVF journey to get pregnant. She unfortunately loses the baby. However, while the doctors are telling her that you know, she's lost the baby, she still feels like she's pregnant and she's still having symptoms. And when she tells the doctors this, nobody is believing her. I thought this book was phenomenal, okay? It was a instant five-star read for me. I always take notes while reading and I literally took no notes reading this. I pretty much listened to it in a single day and it kept my interest, okay? I loved the commentary in this. I loved the ending. I loved the witchy influence in this book. Something pretty cool and interesting about this book is it is going to be the basis of the new season of American Horror Story. I mean, that is kind of crazy to me and I had to look it up a little bit further because they picked the rights up to this book before it was ever even published. And after doing a little bit of research into it, I guess that isn't too weird of a thing to happen. I read that actually Jurassic Park is a book that was bought over by several major several major film studios before the book was even published. There was bidding wars going on because people wanted to buy the rights to make that book into a movie. So I feel like that really does tell you how special this book is that there was that much interest in it before it was even put out into the public to see if you know, the reviews that people were going to have for it. There is a lot of really great commentary in this book. There's trigger warnings though around gaslighting and something I will say though is oftentimes storylines like this I have a very difficult time with because that subject matter is extremely triggering. When you have your main character who is a female and you're also a female reading this and you are basically being gaslit with the main character. And that sort of storyline is triggering to read, but I just wanna warn you guys and tell you guys from my perspective, it was written in a way that I felt like was very palatable and does not hit you over the head with it. There's other books I've read that have these sort of themes that I have found to be not palatable and did hit me over the head with it and in turn I ended up really disliking my reading experience and disliking the book. But I just want to warn you guys if these are triggers for you I wouldn't totally say do not go into this book because like I said I feel like the author did a really good job writing 
that sort of subject matter in a way that was very genuine and sensitive and like I said palatable. The next book that I read and loved was Strega by Joanne Like Holm. This book is actually translated from the original Swedish and in this book we are following a group of young women who are sent to work at a very remote alpine hotel and eventually one of them goes missing and I love this sentence that Goodreads says about this book in the synopsis. What follows are deeper revelations about the myths we teach young women and what we raise them to expect from the world. This book was very, very nearly a five star read for me. I did end up rating it a four star and that is only because I was expecting a little bit more of a punchier ending, but I really enjoyed and loved this book a lot. Saying that, this is the book that 9 out of 10 people, 99 out of 100 people are going to hate. This book is atmosphere and vibes. It's confusing. There's very little plot. It's slow. It's broad. It's weaving. To me, this book was a delicious, witchy, dark, cottagecore dream that I actually listened to this book while sitting in a hot bath for like three hours. This is a very short book, so you could read it in one sitting. And it was delicious, okay? It is all atmosphere and I was living for it. But if you guys are hearing this rave review and you go to pick this book up, please do not blame me if you end up hating it. Because like I said, I can see the majority of readers absolutely hating this book. If you want something more than vibes, if you want something more than atmosphere, then do not read this book, okay? But if you want a dark cottagecore witchy dream-like book, give this one a try because I would love to discuss it with you. The next book I have is The Murder of Roger Ackroyd by Agatha Christie. This is the fourth book in the Hercule Poirot series and this is another book that I actually ended up reading two times in the month of August. I have never in my life read the same book twice within a single month. So this is a first, but I honestly felt like I needed to do that in order to give this book a fair chance because there is so much going on in this book. Upon my initial read of The Murder of Roger Ackroyd, I believe I had this book at either a two or a three star. I don't know why I had such a difficult time focusing and following this one initially, I think it's because, like I said, there is so much going on in this book. I really feel like half of this book is misdirection and maybe there's one too many red herrings in it. There's almost too many players and too many redirects. That was at least my thoughts upon my first read of this book and like I said, in order to give this book a fair chance, I really wanted to give it a reread. Because I know that The Murder of Roger Ackroyd is a very popular fan favorite of Agatha Christie and I want to love Agatha Christie, okay? And I do have to say, I feel like I am a fan of Agatha Christie, but if you guys have watched my videos, you definitely have seen some more negative thoughts towards this author. And I think that you are allowed to have both. You can not love every book that an author comes out with and be critical of some of their work and still enjoy books by them. Now something interesting about my reading experience of this book in particular is that I read it and then read two Agatha Christie books that I really did not get along with and I spoke about both of those in part one of my August wrap up. Then I decided to go back into this book and give it a reread because I know it is such a fan favorite. Upon rereading this book, I was constantly comparing this one to the other two that I disliked. And I found that I was able to see a lot more positives in this one than I did the first time. I was finding that the characters in this book were a lot more colorful, a lot more interesting, a lot more easy to differentiate than some of Agatha Christie's other books. That being said, this author does have over 60 published books and there is no way that every one of those books 
is gonna be a win, you know? If you're looking for somewhere to start from this author, I don't know if I would recommend this one being a start because for me, there was a lot going on in this book and I don't know if it's fair to have to read a book twice to feel like you really understood it. Overall though, I did enjoy this story. I did find it quite comical at times. It was far and beyond more interesting than the other two books I read by her in August and I really appreciated that the characters in this one felt a lot more complex and I had an easier time telling them apart. Overall, I will continue to read from this author because I am definitely craving this sort of slower mystery. If you guys have a favorite Agatha Christie book that you would recommend to me, please let me know in the comments what that book is. The next book I have to talk about is Everyone in My Family Has Killed Someone by Benjamin Stevenson. This was a very Agatha Christie-like sort of mystery book. This one to me was a three star, but it was a high three star. I did enjoy this book. I love most about this book, the writing. A lot of the writing is very witty, very self-aware, and there's just some moments that really had me laughing. I was especially enjoying this one towards the start of the book. I was having a lot of fun with the writing style, which was very quirky, like I said. However, I did find that this book lost a bit of steam along the way. There just were a lot of times where I felt like I didn't really care what was going on. Overall though, like I said, this is a high three star and it was one of the better books I read in August. The next book I have is Ghost Wall by Sarah Moss. This was a very odd little novella. We are following a young girl who lives in a very sheltered, sort of cult-like family. They are living as if they are ancient Britons surviving by the tools and knowledge of the Iron Age. This main character's father is obsessed with the ancient Britons and he really hates anything new age, anything technology, and he forces his family to live in that same way. They then get invited to host this like anthropology group. And when our main character starts interacting with the students, she starts to learn like, you know, this might not be the only way to live. I really appreciated a lot of this book. It was quite grueling at times reading this. Like I said, we are following a very cult-like patriarchal household that was oftentimes very stifling to read. I loved though the very beautiful, lovely prose and writing in this book. This is another one that is extremely atmospheric, cottagecore-esque, similar to Strega that I spoke about earlier. While this one is stifling and grueling to read at times, I really appreciated the commentary on sexism in this book. I think that this is a hidden gem and I would love to see more people read it and speak about it because I think there is a lot of really powerful stuff in this book. The final best book that I read in August was Mr. Magic by Kirsten White. I know that this book is becoming quite the divisive read, similar to Kirsten White's other book Hyde. Even for me, I had a very difficult time settling on a rating for it. I went from a three star to a five star and I think I am settling on a four for this book. However, I definitely see and can agree with both sides of this book. I see what it was lacking, but I can also really see the value in this book. One sentence synopsis, we are following the cast of a children's TV show who come back together now as adults and they start to remember things about their childhood and filming this TV show that weren't quite normal. I do have to say, I think that this book starts out really, really strong. I love the Mandela effect conspiracy vibes that we get in this one. I thought that was so interesting. Also, I love the chapter headings in this book. If you guys read just the chapter headings, they actually spell out to make a poem. I also thought that the atmospheric writing really, really shined in this book. It's a very original story in my opinion, especially within the horror genre. I don't think I've really read another similar book to this one. If you guys have, please let me know what that book is because 
I would love to read more books that are similar to this one. I also love that acknowledgements portion at the end of this book. It definitely made me emotional reading it. It made me immediately want to go back and reread this book through that lens because she gives you some perspective on what she was trying to say writing this book and what Mr. Magic maybe meant. And I want to reread this book now because I feel like it really changes the perspective of the book. I did reread the last few, maybe three chapters of this book because I felt like I was missing something. There are aspects of this book that read pretty convenient. There's things that aren't quite explored and laid out in the way that I feel like they should have been. It reads as almost plot holes. For example, the way that this group of estranged adults almost immediately just embrace each other back into one another's lives after not speaking for 30 plus years, you know? I don't think that that sort of connection would have just immediately been there. There are a couple other aspects that I found to be kind of confusing and I did put those into my Goodreads review. I just don't want to go into spoilers in this video. But like I said, there's aspects of this book that aren't fully explained. So definitely without a doubt, this is not a perfect novel. I think I could if I was rating this book more critically lower my rating to a three. And if you guys rated this book even lower than that, I would fully understand your rating. Also, pet peeve, the dialogue in this one, it it plays into that thing that I keep hearing when people talk about Kirsten White and especially her other novel, Hyde, is that it reads like a YA novel. And this was a young adult author for many years. Like Hyde was her first adult fiction novel that she published. And so the character dialogue does very often read quite young adult. I can't see these 40, 50 year old adults speaking in the way that they do. Overall, I'm going to leave my rating at a four. While I can admit without a doubt, this is not a perfect book, I did thoroughly enjoy reading it. And it is a book I could see myself rereading in the future and annotating. Out of the 16 books I read in August, those were my eight favorites, the ones I would recommend to you guys, the ones I enjoyed the most. I would love to know what was your favorite book that you read in August? Did you have a good August reading month? If you guys read any of the books that I spoke about in this video, please let me know what you thought of them. But other than that, thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you in my next video.